Assalamu alaikum. Today we're going to talk about the gas pressure. So there's a law for the gas pressure that says that the pressure equals one third multiplied by the density of the gas multiplied by the square velocity. We don't know yet where did this come from, so we will explain. And here's what we're going to do. Let's suppose that we have a cubic structure. A cubic structure like that. So we can assume that this is a cube and accordingly all the uh, dimensions are equal. So the width, the height, the length, they're all L. So the length is L. And we have a particle, a gas particle, just over here. So if we put the axis like that, so this is the x-axis, this is the y-axis, and this is the z-axis. Um, this particle is of course in a random motion, and so it's moving in all directions but in straight lines. So we will just take the vector of the x direction for now. So we will take the horizontal movements of the particle. So this particle is moving with a velocity in the x direction. So we call this velocity v x. We will call it v x. Here are the given things. So we are going to use them in order to obtain this law or understand where it did come from. So, there's something called the uh, linear momentum, which we refer to as PL. This linear momentum equals the force during a time variation, so F multiplied by delta T. And at the same time, the linear momentum equals the mass multiplied by the velocity because if we calculate it the force equals um, the force is um, the mass multiplied by the acceleration and um, the acceleration is actually so uh, here we have uh, time and the acceleration is velocity over time so multiplied by time, we finally get the mass per multiplied by the velocity. So, in the case here, the linear momentum is mvx, just this way. But, um, we said before that the particles are completely elastic, so when they hit the walls of the container, they go back in the opposite direction and the total force before the collision is equal to that after the collision. So we will calculate the momentum that the wall will apply on the particle. So it's a negative mvx because it's in the opposite direction because it's off the wall on the particle. Negative the actual um, momentum of the particle, which is mvx. So this is the positive value, this is the negative value. So we get a total of negative 2 mvx. So this is the momentum that the wall applies on the particle. We don't want that. We want the momentum that the particle applies on the wall, the net momentum. So accordingly, according to Newton's laws, that for every action there is a reaction equal in magnitude and opposite in direction. So simply, the momentum that we want will equal the positive value of that, which is 2mvx. 
So now we know the linear momentum. So we will write that just over here. So delta PL equals um, 2 MV X. So as we mentioned earlier, the force, the linear momentum equals the force multiplied by the um, time variation which also happens to equal the impulse. So, because this is an elastic collision, there is no loss of mass or heat or radiation or so on. So, the force multiplied by the time will equal the impulse will equal the, the linear momentum. So, we, we can work on this directly. So, let's um, just work on the force alone. The force will equal the delta, the variation in the linear momentum divided by the time, divided by the time. This is theoretical, but practically you can't actually calculate a definite time or a definite force because the times between collisions are very, very small, or short times, so you can't get an exact value of that time. Instead, we calculate an average time. We calculate an average time. So, to calculate this t average, uh, we can say that the velocity equals the uh, distance over the time, right? So, for the average time, we can say that, we, so we bring that up and this goes down, so the average time will equal the distance over the velocity. So in order to calculate the t average, we have our um, distance and the distance here is 2L because the uh, particle goes this way and then it returns back. So this is one L, this is another L. We have um, 2L divided by Vx. So we can plug this right in here and we can get the value of the average force. So the average force equals the momentum, which is um, 2mvx divided by 2L divided by Vx. If we have something like that, then the denominator of the denominator will spontaneously just go upwards. So we will have 2mvx squared, because there are two of them, divided by 2l. So we get something like that. The average force, finally, will equal mvx squared over L. mvx squared over L. Now the final part. So we calculated the average force. So here's what we're going to do next. Now as this is for uh, just one particle. We want to calculate it for a mole. So, to calculate the whole mass here, instead of writing it this way, the average force will equal the mass multiplied by Avogadro's number multiplied by Vx squared over L. And as we know, the pressure equals the force over the area, the force over the area. So as the area here equals L squared, so the pressure equals the force over L squared, the force over L squared. So if we are going to calculate uh, this value, the pressure, we are going to plug this here instead of this F. So the pressure equals the 
mass multiplied by Avogadro's number, the molecular mass or the atomic mass or whatever, over L, um, divided by um, the area, so L, uh, I'm sorry, this is L squared, so L squared, like that, so finally we will have something like that. So L squared multiplied by L, so L cubed. Accordingly, this is very obvious that L cubed is the volume. So the pressure equals the molecular mass or the atomic mass multiplied by Avogadro's number multiplied by the velocity squared divided by the volume. Divided by the volume. So Simply, we can see that this is the density of the gas. So it's the mass, the total mass, so molecular mass multiplied by Avogadro's number over the volume. This is obviously the density. So the pressure actually equals the density multiplied by Vx squared. So where did the third come from? We have to remember that in the beginning we worked on just one vector, the Vx. But because the motion of the particle is like it's the same in all vectors, we can take this as a standard and we will take the average value. So Vx squared actually can equal the Vx plus the Vy plus the Vz. So we will take this value and we will divide it by 3. So instead of writing it this way, the total pressure will equal one third multiplied by rho multiplied by V square and this is the gas pressure law. I hope it was clear for you and until the next time I thank you for watching and see you.